So in this video, we're going to be talking about two different classes of functions. The first one would be um, the trigonometric functions. So, so far we've talked about lots of different functions, right? Uh, that are continuous. Trigonometric functions are just another of that class. So that would include sine of x, cosine of x, secant of x, and uh, cosecant of x. And the list goes on and on with all the combinations of these functions. But secant of x is basically for future reference. Um, it's 1 divided by cosine of x. So that turns out to be a, a function, a quotient function as well, right? It, a function we talked about in the previous uh, lecture. So uh, besides that, cosecant of x turns out to be 1 over sine of x, right? And tangent is another class. So what I want you guys to know is... If you visualize the sine graph, it gives you something like this, right? So whatever you do, if you approach negative infinity or positive infinity, this is still going to cycle between 1 and minus 1. And that's going to happen over here as well. So this keeps on going, like, this keeps happening. This pattern, it repeats itself, right? Forever. So what you need to know is that it remains continuous during that. There's no hole in the graph that results. For cosine, it's very, it's similar. Because the graph cosine is actually, the sine graph just moved forward, right? In, in a sense. So that's the cosine graph at x equals 0. And that has a similar touch to it. That's sine of x and this is cosine of x. So just think about it for a second. Um, these will be continuous throughout. And uh, if you talk about secant x and cosecant x, what do you think is the place what do you think about these functions? Are they continuous or not? Well, if you were to consider the rational argument, rational function argument, when cosine of x is equal to 0, at that particular point of x, the function, the graph is discontinuous. And if you were to apply that for sine of x equals 0, then that would be discontinuous at that point as well. So let's calculate these points. So basically at this point, we're trying to determine whether this graph is always continuous or not. Or if it's continuous, in what range of values is it continuous? So for cosine of x, we know that cosine of, um, at this point, basically, it's pi over 2, right? So cosine of pi over 2 equals 0. But that's not only it. Uh, cosine of 3 pi over 2 gives me a 0 as well, right? So we can observe a general pattern that's occurring, occurring over here. If you notice, the difference between pi and 3 pi is by 2, and the denominator remains the same. So the next value at which it's going to be 0 is cos 5 pi by 2, right? What about sine of x? We're going to talk about the relation in a while. Sine of, well, I know that sine of 0 is 0. Another value is sine of pi equals 0. And so is sine of 2 pi equals 0. So if you try to extend these arguments to n, uh, to in terms of n, or basically um, a constant, right? They turn out to be different, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to express that. I'm going to express the solution. So basically, I'm going to try to find all values of x such that the sine of those values gives me 0. And that's simply n pi. For n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way. Think about it for a second. It does make sense, doesn't it? I plug in a 1, I get a pi sine of pi is 0. I plug in a 2, I get a 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0 as well. 3 pi, same. If I extend it to the negative side, sine of 0 is 0. Sine of minus pi is 0. Minus 2 pi is 0. So this formula is valid. So what I'm saying is, this: the conclusion in this case is that when x equals n pi, the graph of 1 over sine x is not continuous. But other than that, all other values are going to give us a continuous graph. If you apply that argument over here, we can see the same argument would apply. If you were to find a solution like that, that would simply be 2n minus 1 divided by 2. What does that mean? Well, it's actually very simple if you think about it. If you plug in a 1, you get... Um, Sorry, there's going to be a pi over here. I'm sorry. Right, there's going to be a pi. So when n is equal to, well, 1, 
I get pi over 2. When n is equal to 2, I get 3 pi over 2. Cos is 0 at that point, at that point. When it's 3, I get 5 pi over 2. Cos is 0 there as well. Let's extend it to the negative side. What if I plug in a 0? I plug in a 0, I get a minus pi by 2. Cos is 0 as well, there as well. Extend it to minus 1, the argument goes on and on. So this general solution would give me value, would give me the points on the graph 1 over cosine of x where the graph is discontinuous. So that's pretty much the giveaway from this. So 1 over cosine x is discontinuous at these points. 1 over sine x is discontinuous at these points. Other than that, the graphs are continuous and they always will be. So you might get an exam question that's based on this to find the range of values in which continuity holds or discontinuity holds. Okay. So another example to think about is a tangent of x. But tan of x is uh, somewhat different than the other examples we've taken care of. Um, the thing is, uh, for some value of x, the graph of tan gives us um, an undefined answer, if you think about it in simple terms. What I'm saying is, if you plot the value of, well, of the value of the y component over here, then at 0, tan of 0 gives 0. At um, 45 degrees, or that's pi by 4, right, we get a value 1. At tan 90 degrees, or that's simply pi over 2, we get infinity or undefined or an incredibly large value for the function. So the tangent graph kind of looks something like this and that's asymptotically going to approach 90 degrees. So it's going to be undefined at pi divided by 2. right? So at pi over 2 the function value does not exist. right? So there's a chance that Actually, it is the case that at x equals pi over 2, the tan x graph is un is basically discontinuous or undefined, right? But we're more concerned about continuity, so I'm going to call it discontinuity at this point. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be talking about the absolute value function, okay? So I'll see you guys then.